There is no female in cinematic history that kicks more ass than this lady right here. Aliens stars Sigourney Weaver, Michael Biehn, Bill Paxton, and is directed by James Cameron. Game over, man. Game over. So what's up, guys? Just last week, I did my Alien 3 review because that movie was just heavily on my mind. So why am I doing Aliens now? Because just about an hour ago, I was actually sitting in a theater watching Aliens on the big screen. I was 13 when it came out back in 86, and for some reason or another, I didn't get a chance to go see it. So I always wanted to see this movie on the big screen. And it was so awesome. It's just so big. It's if, if you see any movie on the big screen, Aliens is perfect because it's just a massive movie, really. And I got to go see it with a couple of my Killer Flicks buddies, uh, Antoine Thomas and also Thomas Davis. But as soon as I saw this movie, I said, I have to go home, I have to sit down, I want to get a review out for this because Aliens is just such a special movie. It is one of the best action movies out there. It's one of the best science fiction movies out there. It's got one of the greatest heroines ever, Ripley. And James Cameron, this is arguably one of his best directed films. And I know that's saying something. Aliens really is the type of movie that you could do easily a 20 minute review on because there's so much to take a bite out of. It, it has so many great things going for it in the characters, in the direction, in the story. Everything about it is just done at an A level. And it is strange that this movie came out seven years after the first Alien. They had always wanted to do a sequel, but 20th Century Fox had made quite a few personnel changes along the way, so it just never came to fruition. But then this young director comes along, James Cameron, who directed the first Terminator. And that's really what got him noticed. As soon as they saw that movie, they thought this guy would be great for doing a science fiction film. And so they offered him Aliens. But James Cameron did not want to make the same movie that Ridley Scott made. And it's a very, very different film than the first Alien. Some might even say Alien has some quite sexual undertones. Whereas Aliens is a different beast. It's a big action movie. It's chrome and steel. There's really very little that's sexual about it at all. This is more about the humans fighting the aliens and very little time is taken to really understand the aliens. Where in the first movie it's a lot more cerebral. They take a lot of time to get to know what the xenomorph is but this one it really just gets down and dirty. There's this colony on LV-426 and they are not able to get in touch with them so what they do is they send this military group out to find out what's going on and they send Ripley along uh, kind of as an advisor. She has experience with the first alien encounter, so they need her guidance on this one. But as you all know, Whalen Corporation is not to be trusted, and that plays a big part in this movie. Also, just to touch on that first scene, it really just blew my mind when we find out that Ripley has been floating in space for 57 years. That was just a really interesting aspect to add to the story. I mean, there's already a lot of story that you can tell, but James Cameron, he added all these little interesting plot devices along the way, uh, like that, and also like the character Newt. And they mostly come at night. Mostly. Newt was used perfectly to kind of establish Ripley's more feminine side because we didn't really get to see much of that in the first movie. And if you dig a little deeper and watch the, the special edition, which is 30 minutes longer, you find out that Ripley actually had a daughter and that is the reason, or one of the reasons, why she establishes such a close relationship with Newt. Now let's discuss another reason why Aliens work so well, and that is the characters. I was in the military for 24 years, and a lot of times people ask me, what is your favorite military movie? And I will say, Aliens. I think Aliens really nails that, that aspect of military camaraderie. And one thing that it does that a lot of other military movies don't do is it takes each character and gives them their own persona. But it really nails down all those the, the military mannerisms that we have come to notice in certain movies and, you know, actually being in the military. As a former military member, I really just get a kick out of that. You know, it takes me back to my brothers in arms when I was actually serving. But Bill Paxton, oh my God. Bill Paxton just really nails his performance in this. How do I get out of this chicken shit outfit? You secure that shit, Hudson. He is so refreshing because you know, they could have went with just a straightforward military type of person, but he is that guy that uh, doesn't 
want to be there. Hey, maybe you haven't been keeping up on current events, but we just got our asses kicked, pal. He constantly complains throughout the whole movie. Well, that's great. That's just fucking great, man. Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? Game over, man. It's game over. And this could come off as really annoying if not played right, but Bill Paxton really makes it hilarious, actually. This little girl survived longer than that with no weapons and no training, right? <laughs> Why don't you put her in charge? You better just so he knows how to ride that fine line between annoying and funny. But still to this day, 30 years later, Bill Paxton is constantly quoted. Game over, man. Game over. Why don't you put her in charge? Also, Michael Biehn is really great in this. And what's interesting is he originally didn't have the part of Hicks. So all the other cast members, they went through all this hard military training and everything. Michael Biehn just gets a phone call and says, can you show up tomorrow because you're going to be shooting? And he's like, yeah, sure. So he didn't have to do any of that stuff. But he fell right into the role perfectly. He's a much different character than Hudson. Uh, he has to take the leadership role at one point. He doesn't really want to, but he still steps up to the plate and does it. And this is a, a type of character that we don't see that often in military movies. Well, I believe Corporal Hicks has authority here. Corporal Hicks is? This operation is under military jurisdiction and Hicks is next in chain of command. My right, Corporal? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And he establishes this great relationship with Ripley along the way without without it being forced too much. So by the end of this movie, there's this there's this great kind of family dynamic between him, Ripley, and Newt. And as we all know, it didn't turn out the way they wanted it to turn out in Alien 3. Then you got Burke, played by Paul Reiser. Just another character that I have to talk about because he is essential to the plot. He is the scumbag company man. And he really has a great arc because in the beginning of the movie, you don't see him as a, a bad guy. The layers are gradually peeled back on his character. And by the end of the movie, you just cannot stand him. And I love that James Cameron did that. He didn't create this villainous type character that starts off villainous. He starts off like a normal guy. But he always had those, you know, those villainous thoughts in the back of his head, but he didn't come across as that. And then finally, you got Bishop, who is another synthetic organism, uh, much like Ash in the first movie. And that's another cool aspect of Aliens, because immediately you don't know if you want to trust him or not because of what happened in the first movie. So that just creates uh, an element of tension throughout. Lance Henriksen really just nailed Bishop. And what's interesting is he was originally going to be cast as a Terminator until Arnold Schwarzenegger came along. And how could I not talk about Ripley? Sigourney Weaver is so great in this. This created the template uh, that has been copied so many times since then, that badass female. Even uh, Linda Hamilton in Terminator 2 borrows elements from Ripley. But Sigourney Weaver did such a great job, she was actually nominated for an Academy Award, and that's rare in a science fiction action film. As a matter of fact, James Cameron kind of modeled uh, the action side of her character after Rambo because James Cameron actually helped write uh, Rambo First Blood Part Two. But then she also has this uh, softer side, you know, w especially with the character Newt. And it's just nice to have a character like that in a movie that just has so many different elements to her. And lastly, we're going to talk about uh, not just the Xenomorph, but the Queen Alien. This is the first time that we had been introduced to the Queen Alien. They did it perfect because they saved it until the, the last, uh, say, fourth of the movie. And remember, guys, there was no CGI back then. Everything you see on screen is practical effects. I just saw this movie in the theater, and it's still creepy as hell. I don't know how James Cameron pulled it off, because if you look at behind-the-scenes uh, videos, of the Queen Alien, it looks silly, but with uh, the proper lighting and direction and all that, it works perfectly. And it's still to this day, one of the most iconic movie monsters of all time. So guys, in the end, you guessed it, I have to give Aliens a trapped on an island. It is one of the greatest action films ever, one of the best science fiction films ever. I could literally keep going. There's so much to talk about with this movie, but I don't wanna bore you guys to death. So anyway, what are your thoughts on aliens? Looking forward to hearing them. Also, make sure you become a member of our Killer Flicks Facebook group where we talk horror all day, every day. Also, if you look right down there, you can see all my social media links. And if you want to support Drum Dums, be sure to check out my Patreon link uh, down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and Drum Dumb out.